eight seconds. Stay on, and you win more than a million dollars. Fall off, and you get nothing. It is the high stakes world of the professional bull riders, where time has never seemed so slow. Far from the theatrics of the bull riding circuit, in the middle of his 80 acres of land in the southeastern United States, Jerome Davis is tending to the grassroots of a sport. You been down through there lately, all the way across? Yeah, down through there lately. That other little red gunslinger or something, boy, he is stocky and stout. He's won almost every major title in the sport. And here, at his backcountry ranch in Archdale, North Carolina, he's breeding the next champion. You know, that's what we strive for, is to have some of the best bulls in the world. And I, th I think they took a little over 100 bulls to the world finals. Bull riding, as we know it today, wouldn't exist if it weren't for Jerome. The professional league was born one day in 1992, when Jerome and the top competitors in the sport crammed into a motel room in Scottsdale, Arizona, and hatched a plan. There was 20 of us that um, just come together that day and, and decided that, you know, bull riding could be a standalone sport. And um, it started, we all pitched in a thousand bucks. And, you know, at the time I didn't have a thousand, I had 500. And I, I told him I thought I could come up with the other 500, and I did. A new league was created, but it didn't even make a headline. People said we were crazy, but, you know, today it don't look so bad. I don't know if very many people would invest a thousand bucks and turn it into a few million. <laughs> Today, bull riding is one of the fastest growing sports in the Americas. It has a television deal with a major U.S. network, prize money in the millions, and legions of fans. When we first started the PBR, it seemed that our, our fan base was more cowboys, people, ranchers, farmers, that type of people would be at our events. Today, I see more mainstream type audiences. No surprise then that at the 20th annual bull riding world finals in Las Vegas, the arena is packed. The draw is obvious, the thrill of seeing someone stay on top. And the gut-wrenching suspense of watching someone get thrown off. They don't, they hate to see somebody wreck and, and have a bad wreck, but if it happens, they don't want to miss it. The crowd certainly doesn't want to miss the conclusion of a year-long rivalry between two-time defending champion Silvano Alves from Brazil. Silvano Alves, blow for blow, the biggest battle in the history of the PBR, and that man will never give up. And homegrown favorite, American J.B. Mooney. I think it's that, that American-Brazilian rivalry a little bit, you know, because the Brazilians have just been winning this thing for the last few years, and... The Americans were ready to take it back. But there's an outside contender too, a Canadian, Ty Pazabon, a relative newcomer from Merritt, BC. My chances for winning the world finals right now is looking really good. Like I have a really good bull tonight and I'm sitting, I think six overall for the whole event, so if I do my job, there's probably a pretty good chance that I'll be the World Finals champion. This year, the competition is fierce. And Jerome is taking it all in. He knows that when you get on a one-ton behemoth, there are big consequences if something goes wrong. I've had three of my friends get killed riding bulls. 
Jerome came close to death himself. It was in the arena, one day in March, 1998. Everything was going wrong. It's like, you're not supposed to be here this day. He was competing in Fort Worth, Texas. He was riding Knock Him Out John, a bull he had been on before. As it worked, everything was going good. I was riding him around there. And... But suddenly, and without warning, the bull made a move Jerome wasn't expecting. And he jumped forward. And when he did, he got me to the arm and hit me in the temple and knocked me out. Jerome lay in the arena, unable to move. It would be the last ride of his life. And I can remember the doctor coming back in there and saying, hey, you're, you're not going, you're never going to walk again. Next, injured but not broken. If I could walk today, I would love to be, be right back in the middle of it. A world champ finds new life in the sport. He was 25 years old. He had won almost every major bull riding title on the circuit. But now, as Jerome Davis lay motionless in the arena, it was all over. I don't remember waking up in the arena. I remember being in the pens in the back, and, and a buddy of mine, Tater Porter, was there. And I said, Tater, will you take my glove off? Because I couldn't feel my body. I was just numb. Jerome was paralyzed from the chest down. I was in denial, but, but I remember asking my sister, you're, you're telling me I can't ride bulls again. That day in March 1998, when Jerome was thrown off the bull, he says he was also thrown off his course in life. His dreams of a lasting bull riding career were dashed. But Jerome refused to give up the sport he helped build. Today, he breeds future champions. This is the one I want to see. He just, he just shows a lot, of, a lot of potential when he was younger. He was just so, so green and wild, you know. He looked good, didn't he? What was that? See, that's what we wanted to see. He, he done what he was supposed to. That's, that's good stuff. These bulls can bring in hundreds of thousands in prize money. Placing a weighted dummy on their back, Jerome carefully gauges the speed, kicks, and spins of his young calves to see if they'll be contenders. Bulls, I mean, you, you can't make them buck. I mean, they, they either got it in them or they don't. I mean, it's kind of like a racehorse. They, you know, they, you can't make a horse run fast. He's either got it bred in him or he don't. And same deal with these bulls. I mean, they either, either got it or they don't. These bulls are considered athletes, too, and are even tested for steroids. Periodically, the bulls will be tested just to keep everybody on a level playing field. But they are only half the team. The other is the rider, and there are many up-and-comers to watch. Among them, Ty Pazabon of Merritt, B.C. There's actually another Canadian bull. If you can see him, this next pen over there, that one cost me a lot of money, and that one over there, he made me a lot of money. Ty has already won the Canadian Finals. Now at the 20th Annual World Finals in Las Vegas, he's looking for another title. You're kind of looking at the walk from the dressing room down to the arena floor right here. As you can see on the wall here, there's a, all uh, every year's world champion. It's kind of cool. Hope to have my face up here one day. This is... Yeah, the Stanley Cup of the NHL. You know, it's, my, it's been my dream since I was a little kid. I watched all these guys on TV, and, it, uh, and now, I'm, now I'm here with them. So it's pretty, it's pretty awesome. With the competition just minutes away, backstage, Ty readies himself for his moment. So I always take a wire brush, wire brush some of it off. I'll take my rope as well. Ty is preparing his riding rope with soap and rosin, a sticky concoction to help him hold on. So in the chute, I'll be warming my rope up. And I'll warm up my handle. 
And that's that. Locked in. This competition is a tight race between the American favorite, J.B. Mooney, and this guy, Silvano Alves from Brazil, the winner of back-to-back -back world championships. Canadian Ty Pazabon knows he needs a high score to stay in contention. But his bowl is not cooperating. Jerome has been there. No matter what, when, when you're getting on, you need, to, you need to take control of the situation no matter what he's doing in the buck and shoot. And, and that's what them guys are thinking. They're, they're not getting on going, oh, no, I'm scared. They're getting on thinking, I'm getting ready to eat you up. It's the moment of truth. The gate opens. For four seconds, Ty holds on. But a hard kick catches Ty off guard, and he's thrown off. You know, he's at the PBR World Finals. There's a lot going on, you know, and he's just right out of the box. He never did get with him, you know. And, and then bulls that are that are get you, get you rocking like that, you, you really got to stay down. Ty finishes a disappointing 15th place. I think as, as he matures and gets a little older, settles in, this kid here will see do some great things. He's got a lot of talent, and, and Canada's got a good one uh, on their team right now. In the end, it's down to the defending champion Silvano Alves from Brazil and American favorite J.B. Mooney of North Carolina, who lives just down the way from Jerome. J.B. don't live but about an hour down the road here from me. And, you know, the, it's one thing we need an American to win. The Brazilians have been kicking our butt for the last three or four years. It'll take a stellar ride by J.B. to unseat the Brazilian champion. Eight seconds later, J.B. Mooney does what every bull rider dreams of, winning the professional bull riders world championships. For Jerome, there's still joy in watching the sport he's dedicated his life to. Oh, I miss it a lot. I mean, that's as, as all you dreamed of when you was a kid, you know, growing up. And But, you know, we haul these bulls around, and I'm around it a lot, so it ain't like, uh, you know, I just dropped it cold turkey. 20 years after a bunch of cowboys met in a motel room, Jerome Davis still makes his living off bull riding. And his dream will always be in the middle of the arena. And if I could walk today, I would love to ride bulls right now. I mean, I'm kind of getting a little age on me now, but I would love to be, be right back in the middle of it.